Hey, welcome back to the channel. So a little while back, I did a few videos on a 2009 Mac Pro. I got it for a great price, upgraded the heck out of it, and I've been trying to figure out what to do with that machine since I got it. I think I finally found the perfect use for an older Mac Pro, and that is running virtual servers on your Mac Pro using Proxmox. If you don't know what Proxmox is, it is a open source server virtualization platform. So basically what that means is that you can take your Mac Pro or any other beefy machine and use the resources on there to run multiple servers on your one computer. The way you do that is that you create a virtual machine for each one of those servers. And honestly, it doesn't have to be a server. It can be just a regular operating system. I'll tell you more about that in just a second. But you set up that virtual machine, you load whatever you want on there, and then you can have multiple of those devices running on your one computer. Now you may be asking why you would wanna do this and I have the perfect use case, which is the reason why I started using Proxmox on this Mac Pro. I had multiple servers all over the place, ranging from Raspberry Pis up to computers that I built. I run my own DNS, I use Plex, so I have a Plex server, I set up a Minecraft server for my son, I have a print server, and also I do home automation through Home Assistant, so I had a server for that. Most of those were individual boxes that were running 24 seven, all using outlets and internet connections, and I wanted to find a way to consolidate that down to one machine, and that's where Proxmox comes in. Now, I'm not gonna go through detailed installation steps in this video, that requires a whole video in itself, but if you wanna see that, leave comments down in the comment section below. I'm happy to put that together. But really, just talking through the installation, it's very, very simple. The only thing you're gonna need for your Mac Pro is you're gonna need the original video card that came with the Mac Pro, or any video card that is flashed with a firmware that works with the Mac Pro. The reason for that is because you're gonna download the image for Proxmox, burn it to a USB, and then you're gonna have to boot off that USB, which you do by holding down the option key, selecting the USB, and it'll just boot into the Proxmox installer. Apart from that video card, you're also gonna need two hard drives. You're gonna need one to install Proxmox on, and then you'll need another blank hard drive that you're gonna need to set up your virtual machines. Once you do that, just boot off that USB, install it on the drive that you had designated for, just walk through the installer, and then once it's installed, you can go to the web interface. So let's take a look at that now. This web interface is laid out really well. You can do all kinds of stuff from creating the virtual machines to monitoring them, to remoting into them, to restarting them, doing backups and snapshots, all that kind of good stuff. And again, all these virtual machines just use a piece of the resources that are on your Mac Pro. So for instance, on my Mac Pro, I have 12 cores or 24 threads and about 96 gigs of RAM. I can split that up any way I want and dedicate however much I want to the different virtual machines. Like for that DNS server, I don't need that much resources, so I might dedicate you know two gigs to that. Whereas my Plex server, I want that to be a little bit beefier, so I might dedicate you know two cores and eight gigs of RAM to that. It all depends on the needs for the virtual machine or the virtual server that you are configuring. And the nice thing is that if you ever need to add additional resources, all you need to do is shut it down, go into the resource you wanna increase, increase it or decrease it, and then start up your virtual machine again, and it'll get reflected by the operating system. It's very, very slick and very user-friendly. Now, like I mentioned, you can run virtual servers on here, like I consolidated all my physical servers into this one machine that runs all these virtual servers, but you can also install operating systems. You can basically install anything because once this virtual machine is created, it's treated just like a physical machine. So I have a Linux installation and a Windows installation installed. That way I can access it. You know, if I'm on a Chromebook, I can access Windows. If I need to do something in Windows real quick, I just remote in to my Windows instance. I have a Linux set up on there because if I wanna do testing in Linux and don't wanna do it on one of my production Linux boxes, I can go into that virtual machine, do my testing and not have to worry about impacting my production system. 
Now, the other thing that's really nice about this is you can do backups and snapshots. So it's super easy to take a quick snapshot of the current state of your computer before you make any changes, before you do any testing. That way, if your changes mess something up, all you do is restore that snapshot and you're right back to where you were the moment you took that. So Proxmox itself is a fantastic tool and paired up with a beefy Mac Pro, even a 2009, it's running beautifully. The Plex server, I've had no slowdowns or hiccups, even with transcoding, it's working great. The Minecraft server works great. Home Assistant is working awesome, very, very responsive, much more responsive than running in on something like a Raspberry Pi or something like that. And I've had absolutely no issues with this. I've done updates and upgrades and all kinds of stuff and uh, have not had a hiccup at all. I can definitely recommend this solution. If you have one of these Mac Pros and you're not quite sure what to do with it, this is definitely something to look into if you have a need for running all those uh, servers or even multiple virtual machines that you want to be able to access from anywhere on your network. Thanks so much for stopping by. If you have any questions, leave those down in the comment section. Also, like I said, if you want me to do a detailed installation video, I'm happy to do that too. Just let me know down below. If you found this useful or informative, please hit that thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't done so already. And I will see you in the next video. Thanks for stopping by.